there's around 100 days left until the start of the GCSE and A-level exam season, which means we're now at that awkward time of year, the time when it's too early to start thinking about the exams because you might still be having mocks or going through new content, but it's also too late to just be laying back and not doing anything. That's why your actions in this time of year might make or break your success at GCSEs or A-levels. And so here's the three mistakes that you need to avoid in the next 100 days to get the top grades. Now, the first mistake that I see a lot of people make is that they're not easing into the exam season correctly. Now, it goes without saying that you need to start as early as possible. But what often happens is that students know that, but they still procrastinate and procrastinate until there's only a couple of weeks or maybe a month left until the start of the exam season and then they start panicking. So they put in 10 hours a day trying to make up for the procrastination. That's a recipe for disaster. That's like me going to the gym as a complete beginner and loading up the bench press with three plates on each side. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna embarrass myself. And another effect of this hasty behavior is that people jump right into studying without actually knowing how to study. It's funny, with basically everything we do, we first learn how to do it and then we do it. That's just human nature. For example, before driving, someone takes driving lessons. Before swimming, they learn how to swim. They don't just jump into the deep end. But for some reason, when it comes to studying, we tend to just start without actually learning how to study. And so what ends up happening is that we spend a lot of time revising in a very inefficient way, just wasting that time, literally burning it. When in reality, if you just spend just a little bit of time learning how to revise before even revising, you're gonna make your revision so much more efficient that you're gonna get a return on your investment when it comes to that time, because you'll be saving a lot of time studying in an effective way. Now, when I was in my GCSE and A-level years, it was quite hard. There wasn't really any resources that taught you how to study. There's just resources about the content itself. That's why I created the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs and A-levels. If you wanna skip the process of trying and failing and then trying and failing, especially because you only have 100 days left, then we've got you covered. I'm gonna keep it brief. In the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs and A-levels, you get four things. Firstly, you get the video program, which teaches you everything that you need from step A to Z to getting the top grades in any subject no matter how difficult or even niche it is. In fact, we recently had a student that we were helping get the top grades in food tech. I knew food tech was a GCSE, but I didn't think that anyone actually took it. Yet, we still had them covered. Not only that though, you also get a personalized study plan based on your subjects. All you do is fill out a form and tell us what subjects you take and we'll tell you exactly how to revise for them. There's also two new additions. The first is access to the elite revisers community, which is just a community of like-minded individuals who are just as ambitious as you. A community of students that all wanna get the top grades. And our second new addition is weekly Q&A calls with myself. So if you have any questions or concerns about revision, you could just come and ask me. Now, I understand that some of you might not be able to financially invest in a program like this, and that's fine. My YouTube videos will always be free, but if you want to guarantee the top grades, then click the first link in the description right now and join the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs and A-levels. Now, that was the first mistake, which is during this time of year, students tend to just jump into revision without actually learning how to. Now, the second mistake that students make is that they start neglecting and sacrificing. You might ask, well, what are they sacrificing? Well, there's three things. The first is that some people feel like they have to sacrifice some subjects over others. You might feel like when it comes to maths, then you're doing very well. You've got it a couple of eights, maybe even a nine. But then when it comes to English, you're not doing as well. You can barely get sixes. And so logically, you decide to focus on English more than maths. Now, obviously, if you're struggling with a subject over another, you're gonna spend more time with the subject that you're struggling with. That goes without saying. But a lot of students make the mistake of going to the extreme and completely neglecting subjects that they might feel confident with. Now, it's important that you have balance because if you completely neglect a subject, if you go back to it in a couple of months and you've just forgotten everything, then guess what? Now you have another subject that you're struggling with. And that's not the only thing that students sacrifice. Another mistake I see people make is that they'll start sacrificing essential parts of revision. And the most common version of this is that students will start sacrificing flashcards. A lot of people look at flashcards as some sort of luxury, that you don't necessarily need to do them, but if you do it, it would be better. That couldn't be further from the truth. We can split up learning into two different stages, inputting the content and then applying it. By inputting the content, I mean actually digesting and memorizing that information. And so if you're sacrificing flashcards, then you're either substituting flashcards with a passive form of revision, like reading and highlighting, which is gonna be just a complete waste of time and you're not actually gonna input the information properly. Or what's even worse, you might not substitute it with anything. You might just completely neglect the first part of studying, which means your revision is just applying the content. But there's no content to apply in the first place. You cannot skip flashcards, especially because 100 days is more than enough time for you to go and make flashcards for all of your subjects and go through them. Now, the last thing that people neglect is their sleep and exercise. Sleep especially is extremely important. In fact, I've dedicated two whole videos to it. But I'll tell you this, if you ever feel the need to sacrifice sleep just to study, then you might be beyond saving. Trust me, even if you haven't studied at all for a test, it's better for you to get a good night's sleep the night before than for you to stay up and cram and revise. 
Now that was just a brief about sleep. If you don't know how to actually optimize it for the top grades, then you can watch this video. But students also tend to sacrifice exercise. In fact, a lot of them don't even exercise to begin with. One thing that I always used to see amongst my classmates in GCSEs and A-levels is that when the exam season got closer, they started sacrificing exercise because to them, it was sort of a luxury. It didn't really add anything. And to them, getting the top grades was more important. But what if I told you that if you exercise just three times a week, an hour each, so we're talking about three hours a week, which is not even that much, that will give you a bigger cognitive benefit than if you had used that time to study instead. Don't believe me? Well, working out is directly linked to endorphins and hormones being released that will help you do better on exams. And so if you're not going to the gym and you want to get the top grades, then you need to start, even if it's just three times a week. Now, those were the mistakes that most students make this time of year. Remember, there's only 100 days left, and so it's important for you to lock in. And if you really want to lock in, then join the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs and A-levels by clicking the first link in the description.